Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the course on uh, medical biomaterials. Now we are going to talk about uh, properties just as uh, biodegradation or bioresorption. We are going to see what is the difference between this uh, degradation and resorption in the human body and um, how it is going to help because in many systems we do not want the material to stay inside the body, we want the material to leave the uh, body after it has done its function. So, the properties of uh, biodegradation or bioresorption are incorporated into the material. Okay? So, when do you need uh, biodegradable polymers in medical biotechnology? For example, if you look at uh, wound management, okay, in the wound management area, um, stutures, we want the stuture to completely disappear after the wound has healed or staples, clips, adhesives surgical meshes, all these uh, once it has done its job for example, the wound has healed, uh, there is no infection and uh, tissue has grown, we want this material to completely degrade. We do not want uh, a material which does not get degrade and remain in the body forever and ever. Orthopedic devices, they use quite a lot of pins in uh, orthopedic implants to keep uh, uh, the uh, stainless steel or uh, titanium uh, in its position, we want the pins to degrade once uh, the, um, the implant uh, got uh, uh, in line with the uh, bone, rods, a lot of rods are used, screws are used. So, we want all these to degrade after it is done its job, tacks, ligaments in orthopedic area. If you look at dental area, um, guided tissue regeneration membrane, void filling. So, after a tooth extraction, we are filling the void and um, we want slowly uh, the, the material to grow on its own. So, we want degradation. Cardiovascular application, stents, C currently um, metal stents and drug eluting stents are used um, and um, they are quite widely used. Ideally, we would like the stent to degrade after a uh, few months um, so that there is no titanium or stainless steel in, inside. If the stents do not degrade and we have placed a stent, the doctor is not able to place another stent uh, inside the body. That is one problem. Another problem could be sometimes stents start migrating. That means, they move from one place to another and they may block uh, some artery. So, ideally we want the stents to completely degrade after a few months um, and so on. Then intestinal applications, anastomosis rings, drug delivery system. You are delivering drug uh, to your targeted site um, and then once the drug has been delivered, we want the polymeric material to completely de uh, degrade and disappear. Tissue engineering application, um, we use uh, uh, scaffolds for the tissue to grow. Once the tissue has grown and grown and then it has occupied the void, then the scaffold material should completely disappear. We do not want the scaffold to remain. So, in all these areas, um, we would like uh, the material to completely uh, degrade and come out of the system or get completely resorbed. Okay, now, what is the difference between biodegradation and bioresorption? Okay? There are a lot of differences there. Biodegradation, so if you have a polymer, a large molecular weight polymer, um, when it degrades, it becomes a macromolecule. So, a 60 kilo Dalton, uh, say um, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, for example, uh, may degrade into smaller molecular weight, maybe about uh, 10,000 or 5,000 or 15,000. They are called macromolecules, okay? um, but they may stay inside the body and migrate. Okay? So, it is degraded into smaller molecules, but um, it might not be completely eliminated, they may be in the circulation, but still it is biodegradation. So, from maybe about 60,000 like I said, it may come down to 10,000 or 5,000 of uh, molecules of macromolecules of different molecular weights. For example, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, this is used quite a lot in joint prosthesis. Suppose there is a joint replacement, they use metal and um, metal, metal uh, interaction is not very good because it rubs and it leads to release of uh, 
fine metal. So, they use ultra high molecular weight polyethylene um, which acts sort of a lubricant. So, it, even that gets degraded uh, into smaller molecular weight that is called biodegradation. What is this bio resorption? So, the, the entire material gets degraded in vivo and it is eliminated from the body into very low molecular weight molecules. Okay. So, if there is a 20,000 molecular weight material, it gets resorbed into very, very small molecular weight material and it gets eliminated completely. For example, if you take polylactic acid, polylactic acid is a FDA approved polymer and is used in um, quite a lot of implant, especially in drug delivery and so on. So, it gets completely bioresorbed and um, there is nothing left inside, it goes into leave and lactic acid and that gets eliminated, that is called bioresorption. Um, so, sometimes metals are also classified as bioresorbable. Okay. So, if uh, for example, uh, rubbing of metal or corrosion leads to the elimination of the material, so it may slowly come out of the body, but this could be a much longer when compared to polylactic acid bioresorption which is very fast. So, although uh, metals we cannot call it bioresorbable, but it is still called because uh, corrosion may lead to total elimination of the material or even rubbing of material uh, metals um, can lead to final powder which may be get eliminated, but it could be much longer duration. Then we have bio erosion, materials are first degraded on the surface and then it is resorbed in vivo, okay. that is called bio erosion and then bioabsorption. So, materials could dissolve in the body without modification of their molecular weight uh, unlike the bioresorption. Please um, understand in bioresorption the material degrade into smaller molecular weight and then gets eliminated whereas, in bioabsorption uh, the material um, may get be resorbed without actually uh, degrading into smaller molecular weight material. Okay. So, these are the different types of uh, uh, changes that could happen uh, to materials that are placed in the body. And as I said, uh, it is very important in many situations to have uh, biodegraded or bioresorbed uh, polymeric um, material as a implant. So, the res resorption of a material consists of several factors, um, how much water gets um, absorbed because water may get involved in the uh, hydrolysis reaction. Uh, so, after it starts getting slowly degraded, there could be reduction in mechanical properties that means the, st uh, the tensile strength may change, uh, modulus may change, reduction of molecular mass uh, that means the material may be uh, lost in the weight, complete loss of weight. So, the material could be completely uh, losing its weight, then it may be becoming smaller and smaller um, and then finally disappearing. So, that is what it means resorption. For example, I just want to show you a few pictures, look at this. Um, this is a surgery, orthopedic surgery. Uh, what they do is uh, uh, because there could be a lot of uh, infection that could be happening after placing a metal orthopedic implant. So, what they do is they use a polymethyl metaacrylate beads which are um, impregnated with the, an antibiotic like meropenem, for example. So, they keep these beads inside and close it after doing the implant. Um, so, the polymer slowly releases the drug meropenum, thereby it prevents uh, the um, infection and biofilm formation. But the problem with the PMMA is it does not get degraded, so it has to be removed later on. So, they will do a small surgery to remove that. So, this is a bit uh, painful because it is non biodegradable or bio, non bioresorbable. So, ideally one would like to have a nice uh, polymer which is able to take in lot of uh, drug encapsulate lot of drug, it releases the drug say for example, within uh, 6 to 8 weeks and then it also starts uh, getting bioresorbed or biodegraded. So, the doctor does not have to have perform a second surgery. Okay. So, ideally uh, this is a courtesy, this picture is a courtesy from uh, uh, CMC Velour in Tamil Nadu. Now, look at this and this is a polyurethane urethral stent. Okay. So, this is uh, called a urethral stent, it is placed inside uh, the ureter region which connects uh, both the, um, the, uh, the kidney and the ureter. So, the urine flows nicely um, down. Sometimes uh, this ureter can get blocked 
because of infection or if there is stones in the urine, um, sonication is performed to break the stones. So, you need a nice uh, opening so that the small broken powder stones can flow down. So, they place uh, this particular material called a urethral stent, it is quite flexible, um, it is made up of polyurethane. Um, so, after about 5 to 6 weeks, uh, the doctor has to perform another surgery to remove this. Ideally, if we have a biodegradable material, so the doctor places the material stent inside, um, it performs its duty and once it is performed its duty, it should degrade or bioresorbed completely. So, this is another example of where I would like to have a biodegradable material um, like an urethral stent. This uh, picture, this x-ray is a courtesy from uh, uh, Dr. Shroff of uh, Sri Ramachandra Medical College in uh, Chennai. Look at this, these are uh, stainless steel bone plates, okay. So, after an orthopedic uh, um, surgery, these uh, bone plates are placed inside to connect the bones here um, using uh, screws as you can see and pins here you see. Um, so, it is placed like this. So, the bone starts healing, the bone starts growing. So, ideally um, after a few months, if uh, the bone plate completely um, uh, resorbed, then uh, it will be nice. Then it, the pa person will not have a foreign material placed inside. But uh, as you know, currently stainless steel and titanium plates are used which are not biodegradable. So, they remain inside the body forever and ever. This is another place where we would like to have a, a biodegradable bone plate, but it could be after 3 to 6 months. Whereas, if you look at uh, the urethral uh, stent, you would like to have it about uh, 6 to 8 weeks. Whereas, if you look at uh, the PMMA loaded, um, drug loaded PMMA in this area, I would like the material to degrade in with about 15 days. So, you can see different types of time durations are required. Here, we would like the material to degrade in about 15 days. Here, we would like to de material to degrade after about 6 to 8 weeks. Um, here, we would like to have the material degrading after about uh, around 6 months. Okay? So, um, if you have a biodegradable bone plate, okay, we will not require another surgery for removing the bone plate. Generally, you cannot remove the bone plate because uh, the bone nicely grows um, and uh, as muscles grow, so absolutely not possible. We can also avoid uh, stress shielding. Uh, if the stainless steel material is not there because there will be only one material that is the bone instead of having bone uh, made up of hydroxyapatite and stainless steel. Um, we can also have a controlled drug delivery. So, if we have a polymeric material which may degrade over a period of time uh, which can be coated with drug, drug gets uh, released slowly. So, um, it prevents the biofilm uh, formation and infection. Okay, so, um, the plate takes care of the mechanical strength initially with time it degrades. So, the plate is completely useless. In the meantime, the bone starts growing. So, the bone takes care of uh, the mechanical uh, strength requirements uh, for the rest of the life of the patient. So, ideally we would like to have the plate slowly degrading and later on the bone takes care of uh, the weight and um, other mechanical requirements. Okay. So, these are few situations I showed you examples where we would like to have uh, um, this type of uh, biodegradable, bioresorbable material. Okay. These are courtesy, the photographs which I showed are courtesy from various uh, places like uh, CMC Velour and Sri Ramachandra Medical College uh, in Chennai. Okay. So, what type of uh, bonds in the polymer could degrade? Um, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur. For example, look at this, this is an ester bond, we will say ester bond. Okay. So, um, or this could be an amide bond or this could be a thioester bond. So, we have C double bond O, uh, X could be oxygen, C double bond O, X could be nitrogen, C double bond O, X could be sulfur. So, these bonds are um, easily hydrolyzable. That means, water can react with that. Uh, maybe a little bit of acid or if you have some enzymes. So, it can generate acid like this. Okay. So, um, if you have polymers which has backbones like this uh, or linkers which has uh, like this type of setup, um, they can get hydrolyzed 
and they can degrade okay, slowly over a period of time. Um, okay, so, ester bond, amide bond, thioester bonds can degrade if uh, the polymer in the backbone has these type of uh, bonds. Okay. Um, or we can have uh, this type of situations, okay. carbonate, these are slowly degradable unlike the uh, previous case where we have uh, these are more faster degradable whereas these will degrade much slowly. Uh, so, we can have O and O, this is called carbonate, you have C double bond O, O and O or we can have urethane, C double bond O, O, NH or we can have urea, NH, NH and C double bond O. So, these are also hydrolyzable, um, that means they can react with water, but, but they are slowly uh, reacting unlike the previous case or we can have other situations like imide, anhydride, again anhydride, imide they can degrade much faster. So, we have C double bond O connected by O, another C double bond O or C double bond O connected by nitrogen another C double bond O or C double bond O connected by S another C double bond O. Um, so, they can also hydrolyze to form acid and an ester like this. Okay, so, imide is an example, anhydride is an example. Okay, so, here um, we can have a o, o on both sides or nitrogen on both sides, S on both sides with a ketone C double bond O. So, again this can give you a acid okay, um, and uh, another uh, okay, hydrocarbon here, whereas this one we have C double bond O on both sides connected by an oxygen or a nitrogen or a sulphur. Okay, so, these are various types of bond systems which are biodegradable. Okay, so, if you are designing polymers with these type of uh, um, backbones, then they are hydrolyzable that means they can react with water to slowly um, and as I mentioned some of these bonds are uh, degradable at a faster rate, some of these bonds are degradable at a slow, slower rate. So, if I am thinking about a 2 weeks, 3 weeks degradation or if I am thinking about 6 months, 9 months degradation, I can design polymers uh, with these different backbones. Okay? So, we have acetals some open some examples okay? acetals. Okay? Uh, oxygen on both sides like this, they can degrade hemiacetals. Okay. So, you have the ring system which are degradable, ethers, okay. so like I showed you here, right? Uh, ethers connected, like I showed you here, oxygen, these are okay. ethers um, which can degrade nitriles. Okay. So, the C triple bond N they can degrade, phosphonate they can degrade, polycyanoacrylate. So, diff different types of uh, bond systems that uh, are degradable. So, polymers, uh, natural polymers or synthetic polymers, natural polymers like fibrin, collagen, chitosan, gelatin, hyaluronic acid, um, cyclic glucons, okay, um, alpha cyclic glucons, beta cyclic glucons and so on. If you go to synthetic polymers, uh, polylactic acid, poly um, uh, PGA that is a uh, uh, glycolic, polyglycolic acid or combination of lactic and glycolic, polycaprolactone, polyorthoesters, polydioxanone, polyanhydrides, polytrimethylene carbonates, polyphosphozines. So, a lot of synthetic polymers that can also degrade. Okay? Lot of natural polymers, lot of synthetic polymers that can be degrading. So, we can consider uh, designing um, maybe drug delivery systems or scaffolds. Uh, uh, or bone plates using these polymers and of course, you need to match the other mechanical and physicochemical requirements um, initially for the material to uh, hold. So, you can also have enzymatic degradation apart from the normal hydrolysis type of de degradation. Okay? Uh, so, hydrolysis like I said anhydrides um, are very easily degradable, uh, esters come next and so on. Okay? Um, of course, enzymatic you can have lipases, we can have esterases, uh, all these amidases if present in the in vivo system, they can also aid in the degradation. Some of the degradation is called homoge homogeneous degradation, you can have heterogeneous degradation. Homogeneous means uniformly material, the backbone gets degraded, heterogeneous means it de gets degraded only at the specific locations where we have the sites favorable bonds for it to degrade. 
and if the bond is not favorable for degradation then it will not degrade ok. Uh, bio resorption we can uh, initiate uh, by first solubilizing like dextran, polyvinyl alcohol, polyethylene oxide. So, the, the polymer solubilizes ok and then later on you can have an ionization polyacrylic acid, polyvinyl acetate. For example, uh, some of the polymer uh, polylactic acid uh, you can have ionization. You can have enzymatic reaction ok polysaccharides, polyamides you have amidases or you have esterases or it could be simple uh, hydrolysis like aliphatic polyesters can get simple hydrolyzed and completely get bioresorbed. So, these are various situations we can have solubilization which can lead to um, bioresorption, you can have solubilization followed by ionization, we can have enzymatic reaction uh, after uh, uh, hydrolysis ok or simple hydrolysis without enzymes present all these can lead to bioresorption ok. So, uh, we have uh, a polymer and this bond is there. So, it can get hydrolyzed um, just plain hydrolysis or we can have enzyme that is catalyzing the hydrolysis of this particular polymeric material. We can have two situations surface erosion that means, the surface slowly gets uh, eroded or degraded or the bulk the entire polymer gets degraded and the polymer sort of dissolves or it is not dissolved it is completely um, loses its uh, molecular mass. So, ok. Um, so, two situations surface erosion takes place that means, the sample is eroded from the surface uh, then mass loss is greater than the ingress of water into the bulk. Whereas, if the water ingress is much more and degradation take place then that is called bulk degradation. So, example of surface erosion polyorthoesters polyanhydrides. Um, that means, it the mass gets lost very fast and compared to water ingress into the polymer. Uh, bulk degradation like a PLA, PGA, PLGA, PCL. So, the ingress of water is much faster than the rate of degradation. So, water goes inside and the material starts degrading ok that is called the bulk degradation. So, we have surface degradation. Uh, so, in bulk degradation the degradation takes place throughout the material whereas, surface degradation uh, degradation takes place at the surface because the water ingress is much slower than the mass loss whereas, in bulk uh, ingress of water is much faster than rate of degradation. So, uh, if you have a surface erosion situation may be like this this material may be becoming thinner, 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 thinner um, with time whereas, in bulk erosion material may be getting lost inside you may be start forming pores inside material may be crumbling, material may be breaking into pieces. So, all these can happen in bulk erosion whereas, surface erosion material will be uniformly getting thinner. Bulk erosion material may break into pieces, may, material may form um, pores inside, material may break um, at various places uh, getting chipped because of bulk erosion. So, situations depending upon the type of situations even depending upon the thickness of the material. Um, it could have surface erosion or bulk erosion. So, pictorially we can show it like that surface only and the surface material gets uh, degraded. So, it is very nice to have if you are talking about uh, uh, slow drug release whereas, bulk erosion as the water starts going in and suddenly there could be degradation taking place at various places inside the material also. So, bulk erosion when water diffuses rapidly into a polymer leading to hydrolysis. So, this is a function of rate of hydrolysis of the functional groups, rate of diffusion of water inside the matrix, dimensions of the matrix all these play a very important role um, in deciding the, the material is bulk or surface degradation ok. So, what is the critical thickness for resorbable polymers above which uh, it is bulk or surface ok. So, if for these polymers if thickness is less than this it will be a bulk degradation. So, what it means is uh, water has to ingress if the water can ingress inside then uh, you can have a very good uh, uh, bulk degradation if the water cannot ingress into it that means, the degradation is faster then it will be a surface degradation ok. So, if the material is very thin um, then obviously, you are going to have a uh, surface degradation if the uh, sorry obviously, you are going to have a bulk degradation if the material is very thick um, water is not able to ingress inside then you are going to have a surface degradation and this dimension tells you 
whether it is going to be a surface degradation or bulk degradation. Okay. You can also have had autocatalysis because for example, if you take polylactic acid um, when it degrades uh, it releases lactic acid um, which is acidic and which may enhance the degradation further and further. For example, if you look at this uh, particular picture the rate of degradation versus time initially the degradation is slow. So, maybe acids are produced or maybe some functional groups are produced during degradation which enhances the degradation very fast. So, the degradation can suddenly shoot up like this. This is called autocatalysis. So, oligomeric hydrolysis products like carboxic acid or other acids which may aid the degradation much faster and this material is retained inside they are not thrown out. So, it gets retained inside. So, it causes localized decrease in pH that means material becomes acidic pH at different places which can accelerate the rate of degradation. So, you may form hollow structures within the polymer okay, and because of these acids um, then this leads to rapid deterioration of the mechanical properties and sudden loss of structural integrity like PLGA or PLA autocatalysis takes place because the acids that are produced in various places can enhance the degradation further and further. Um, so, there could these are sites where degradation are going to be much faster that is called autocatalysis based degradation. Okay. Now, um, we can have different types of degradation if you look at type 1 A. So, we have polymers okay, they are connected uh, by certain cross linkers. Okay, so, the polymer is stable it is not soluble in water. The cross linkers could be covalently or ionically cross linked monomers. So, what happens after digestion of these linkages? Okay, the suppose these linkages uh, degrade, then the fragments which are formed could be water soluble. Okay, the, so, if I have say for example, collagen or gelatin which are cross linked. Collagen and gelatin may be water soluble, but uh, uh, the linkages prevents them from degrading or water so solubilizing. So, once the linkages uh, disappear then the remaining portions could be uh, soluble. Okay. So, that is called a type 1 degradation. If you have type 1 B um, the digestion of the polymer backbone okay, some portions uh, could be degrading that means they have relatively low molecular weight because of either chemical or enzymatic cleavage. Then the resulting fragments are water soluble and have a lower molecular weight. So, uh, some portions of the backbone could be degrading because of presence of low molecular weight. Once they disappear because of uh, degradation through enzymatic or chemical, the resulting fragments are water soluble because they have lower molecular weight that is type 1 B. Type 2 initially water insoluble they may have some pendant groups which may get ionized or hydrolysis uh, degraded. Once these pendant groups degrade because of hydrolysis then the remaining polymer could be water soluble that is type 2. Type 3 uh, we have additional cleavage in the backbone. So, the backbone um, some portions um, can get degraded. So, you can have combinations of type 1A with type 3. So, initial cleavage of the cross linkers and then remaining backbone could be degrading later actually. For example, aliphatic polyesters, um, polyamides, polycyanoacrylates, polyanhydrates, polyacetals, polyorthoesters. So, they have cross linkers um, which may initially get cleaved, uh, then the remaining polymer could be degrading in that. Okay, so, we can have combination. So, these are various situations um, by which we can create biodegradable polymers which may degrade with the different mechanisms at different time periods. So, we have a lot of uh, flexibility in designing uh, polymeric systems with biodegradable properties. Um, so, when we talk about hydrolytic degradation, we so water um, is the reacting with some functional groups. Okay, so, we can have acids catalyzing these, bases catalyzing these even enzymes. So, as I mentioned before, so these are the situations where we can have enzymes also catalyzing or even bases may be catalyzing this type of uh, uh, reactions. Uh, so, a lot of these again what as I showed again before 
uh, and the catalysis could be taking place because of enzyme or acids or bases okay we I showed you before also so all these situations okay so we can have a uh, acids um, for water to react or bases or even enzymes uh, which are catalyzing this reaction um, sometimes even ions could be catalyzing uh, you may wonder where are the ions in the body but biological and cell cultured fluids contain lot of ions okay H plus OH minus sodium plus chlorine minus okay phosphate groups potassium magnesium calcium sulfate 2 minus and so on for example if you look at uh, uh, blood or extracellular fluid you can see uh, Cl minus it contains lot of Cl minus carbonates phosphates sulfates okay hydrophosphates um, sodium magnesium calcium potassium so all uh, you can see blood contains all these as well as extracellular fluid contains all these so these could be catalyzing uh, hydrolysis reactions uh, these could be breaking esters amides uh, okay um, and these could be, be, be breaking um, orthoesters um, carbonates okay so these could be catalyzing some of these reactions okay acid be acid catalyzed base catalyzed or metal catalyzed reactions hydrolysis type of reaction so uh, body contains so many metal, uh, metal um, ions both in the blood as well as in the extra cellular fluid so they could be catalyzing uh, many of the degradation process so even if you don't want degradation sometimes uh, you may be surprised the material is degrading because uh, they are catalyzed by acids bases and ions okay so lot of these uh, materials nitriles um, ethers okay phosphates phosphonates so all these are getting degraded because of uh, presence of uh, acid acidic ions or basic ions and so on actually okay so quite a lot of situations where you can have sulfonamides for example um, produces acidic function okay polycyanoacrylate okay we have the cyano group here um, okay c triple bond n c triple bond n okay and uh, they are getting uh, again hydrolyzed in the presence of base okay uh, sulfonamides they are getting um, hydrolyzed in the presence of uh, acidic or uh, basic functional now if you look at degradation of a polymer okay um, um, this is an example picture i am showing pla starting from 80 milligrams going down to 50 milligrams in 30 days plga starting from 75 milligrams going down to 25 milligrams in 30 day gallic acid is more biodegradable than lactic acid okay as you can see in these two pictures okay so by modifying the amount of glycolic acid in a polylactic system i can um, modify the weight loss okay as you can see and we can assume a first order type of degradation like this you know weight loss is equal to weight loss at time 0 exponent minus kt k value for pla polylactic acid is 0 0.023 k value for plga is 0 0.068 so i am having different uh, by having different amounts of glycolic acid i can achieve different degradation rates which um, means i can have different k values here and um, the degradation generally um, we can assume it as a first order as you can see in this uh, nice fit this is the experimental uh, data is the squares um, and diamonds and the model fit is given by the straight line um, this also shows you uh, the scanning electron pictures of the degradation of both the uh, polylactic acid and polylactic glycolic acid si system uh, nice um, polymeric spheres here as you can see and uh, with time it goes down you can see nice degradation on the polymers of a certain diameter 270 nanometers becomes almost 100 nanometers in 30 day plga starting from 325 nanometers coming down to 75 nanometers okay nice uh, degradation profile you can see and changes in the size of these polymers also okay you can see so uh, if i am using this uh, system for drug delivery obviously if i have drug incorporated into this um, as the polymers degrade losing its um, um, size diameter uh, it may be liberating the drug maybe antibiotic or anti-inflammatory drug so we can use the pla 
or PLGA, both PLA and PLGA are FDA approved drugs. Okay? So, we have very nice uh, situation where um, we can uh, have uh, drug loaded polymers and as you can see within 30 days uh, we achieve uh, um, almost uh, um, 2 times reduction in the size with PLA and uh, almost uh, um, 4 times reduction in the size of uh, PLGA. Okay? So, we will continue in the next class more on the biodegradation as well as uh, bioresorption of uh, polymeric material. Thank you very much for your time.